Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kuwaitan Hotel, Casino, and Convention Center here in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, for a fine evening of professional boxing brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions in association with Fight Night Incorporated and Raging Promotions and Showtime. This is Showbox, the new generation. These bouts are sanctioned and approved by the Sault Ste. Marie Chippewa Indian Boxing Commission. Your chairman is Mr. John Nolan. Your three judges scoring the fight this evening will be Frank Garza of Detroit, Gary Merrick of Muncie, Indiana, and Bill Page of Anderson, Indiana. Your referee calling all the shots in charge of the ring. When the bell rings, give him a round of applause, Mr. Ron Cunningham. Our next bout is scheduled for eight rounds, super middleweights. Introducing first, in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks trimmed in white, this young man weighed in at 163 pounds. His record, an outstanding one. 17 wins, only one loss, with 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, now fighting out of Louisville, Kentucky, they call him the gentleman, Randy Griffin. His opponent in the red corner, wearing the black trunks with blue and white. This young man tipped the scale at 166 and three quarter pounds. His record, 16 wins, no losses, one draw, 10 wins by knockout. He proudly represents his hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yusef Mann. Okay, you guys, I want a good clean fight. When I say break, both you guys stop punching, take a full step back. Protect yourself at all times. Listen to my commands at all times. Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. Back to your corners. Back's loose here in Sault Ste. Marie. Here we go. Randy Griffin in the red. Yusef Mack in black with the blue trim. And it's Griffin. Again, the corner telling us that they feel they're just going to go right after Mack. And it's Mack backing up right now. Griffin to the body with the right. He's got to work behind the jab, and he's doing it well so far, Steve. <laughs> What's interesting about this fight is that Griffin's the one who wants to make it a punch-a-thon. He wants to trade, get close. But he's the smaller guy, and I don't think he hits harder than Mac. So it'd be very interesting to see what happens when Mac lands his straight right hand. And it'll be interesting to see who lands first and who's more committed to the jab. I think it's the key to this fight as they both punch as once and, uh, and take Keep shots on the gloves. But it's Griffin poking through with that left hook to the jaw. Griffin in red and Mack with the overhand right in black. Lazy left hook and now it's Mack doubling that jab. Griffin moving forward. His shin is open. His left hand a little low as he tries to find a hole to the body of Yusef Mack. And I like that commitment to body punching, Steve, by Griffin. He's got to take, really, the essentially the bigger man's legs away, and it's a good idea to start now by going downstairs. Take his legs away, take his reach away. You know, these guys can talk strategy all they want. They're both from Philadelphia. They know each other very well. They spent, one of our production assistants, uh, Mike Randolph, told us he flew with them here on the same plane. They spent stop, four and a half there. hours waiting for a plane in Detroit together. Let's go. Let's go. Warren for low blows there. So these guys are very familiar with each other, besides fighting each other in the amateurs. All that goes out the window. They're from Philly. You know that at some point they're going to brawl next. They both got clipped cleanly there. Left hand for Mack, nice counter shots as he's trying once again, but now he's got that left hand low and his trainer hates that, Percy Custis. Oh yeah. We saw that two years ago in his win over John McKinney, but he got away with it against an inexperienced guy. Griffin is a different opponent. More experienced as he charges ahead. Mack battling back. And Steve, maybe if Mack took a little step back and timed some of those rushes from Griffin, he could counter. Close round to call as 
yards. It's Max slugging with those lefts to the head of Randy Griffin and Red. And blocks Griffin with a left counter. Very good first round. Both guys, in essence, doing what they're trying to do. But it's Mac counterpunching. Griffin leading. Griffin digs that right to the body, follows with a flurry just before the bell, which is really going to make this first round difficult for me to call as Griffin battles back. guys of course Steve said the game plan may go out the window but they sure came in with one I have to work the body early bring him down then just constantly throw punches I'm um, just out maneuvering that's basically what I'm gonna do to him he's gonna come out try to brawl and try to put pressure on me but you know it's not gonna work just gonna move 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 keep moving Sure, right hook. Huh? It's slow. I'm telling you, it's your work. Yes, sir. Steve, normally you don't hear a fighter verbalize much in a corner, but True. The, the what he said quite succinctly in two words is he's slow. Mac talking about Randy Griffin. Do you agree? If he thinks he's slow, <laughs> that's fine, but he has to do something about it. And I guess what he means is that when Griffin leads, he's got the time to counterpunch. He's done very well with that, I think, through one round. And here we see Griffin moving forward. It's a place he has to be, and now they battle against the ropes as they exchange big shots. And Mac making Griffin really feel his power for the first time. As he's hitting him cleanly, Griffin a little bit wild as he tucks in and puts his hands up and bull rushes his way back in towards Mac. Griffin in red, Mac is in the black. I really feel those exchanges, and we've now seen two or three of those in, in one-plus rounds. Favor Mac, because I think he's the harder hitter, but if Griffin can survive those exchanges, the longer the fight goes. I like Griffin more, because I don't think Mac's in the greatest of shape. At least that's what his trainer told us. No great analysis on my part. I'm just telling you what his trainer complained about. His trainer's a taskmaster. Percy Custis may set the bar real high, but yeah. I agree. He's saying that really Yusef took this on relatively short notice, a couple of weeks. But if a young guy, if he's in the gym, he should be ready. But Griffin had been training at high altitude, and they feel he has a distinct advantage. But they feel that Griffin feels he does too, and that overconfidence could come back to scorch him. And don't, and don't forget that, that, that Griffin has been sparring with no less than Bernard Hopkins. You'll learn a little bit, Bill. I think, yeah. <laughs> what not to do? <laughs> it's Griffin and Red. They both have their hands up now. But I'm, so far, I've been surprised pleasantly by Mac's power against this guy. I thought Griffin could be the heavier hitter, but you're right, Steve. Mac shooting those shots with authority. And it's good to see two guys that are arm punchers. They really set down nicely on those shots. Keep him up. Keep now him it's up. Griffin and Red trying to beat up Mac to the body in close. He's where he wants to be, but he's got to punch his way in, and he's not doing that. Instead, he's walking towards Mac. Griffin doesn't throw straight punches. You know, he kind of loops his shots, whether inside or outside. And Mac's jab, Nick, I don't think it's been much of a factor. No, it hasn't. I think his countering, though, has been pretty precise. Now the jab comes into play. Doesn't follow up, and it's Griffin coming forward, looping a shot to the ribs. And now Mac answering back with a three-punch combination. Those left hooks landed flush. Mac standing tall in the black. And Griffin winging shots as he closes the distance before the end of the second. How you feel? Okay. Huh? Good. Put a towel in, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Come here, give me, give me the towel. Just stay there. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yusuf Mack, you see him throwing in combination. That was the brawl early in the second round. Both guys landing, but key there, I believe, is that Griffin aimed a lot to the body. And we see Mack again later in the round. Actually, Nick, both these rounds have been pretty close and, and, and hard to call. I've given the, I gave the first one to, to Mack and the second one to Griffin. If you want to argue the other way around, I'm not going to give you a hard time. You really can't make a case for both as we go to the third round here in Sault Ste. Marie. You know, if Mack ever backs up, I know that's not his style, but if he could back Griffin up, I think he wins easily. He could outbox him. I, it, it's apparent to me Randy Griffin has to be moving forward, and has to be aggressive, and has to close distance to be effective. He's trying, and now we see Mack moving much better. Left hand low, though, again. And now he's against the rope. Shouldn't be, and Griffin has him where he wants him. Tries to beat him up to the body. They want Griffin to punch with combinations. He tries to double the jab there, but it not, has not been effective. Straight right hand down the pike, clips Yusef Mack. Randy Griffin in red. One loss on his record, and the undefeated Yusef Mack in black. His left hand is low again for Mack. Well, Nick, you mentioned Randy Griffin's one loss. You know who that was, too? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Lubawama. the fight. Yeah, right. He is tricky. We'll see him a little bit later in our main event. Keep the shots off. You heard the re referee tell Griffin to keep those shots up. Hey, Mack is landing that left hook a lot, but I don't see a lot on it. He's a better right-handed puncher. Oh, and he just caught you, huh? He just hit Griffin with a right-hand bomb. And Steve, the a difference in two years is apparent to me. I think Yusef Max sits down and shots a lot nicer. The funny thing about that first Showbox appearance with Yusef Mack, he was very young at the time. He won a four-round knockout. I wasn't impressed with him. I, there were a lot of things he didn't yes. do well, and one of the things was that he was in very bad shape and puffing and puffing after two rounds. And arm punching at times, something I haven't seen as much of here. There's Griffin now zinging that jab. We haven't seen that from him all night. He's in a red. And he just doesn't look as fluid a fighter as a Yusef Mack. Yeah, he's not. Griffin is not a fluid fighter. Depends on physical strength, pressure, good chin. So given that, he's got to, again, close distance, Steve. Well, right now, he's bouncing around trying to box a little bit. We'll see. Maybe jump in. He's not going to hit or be hit at this distance. Mack picking off those shots just with the right glove. Left is low and biting a right hand from Griffin that sails short. Yusef Mack coming forward now. One of the few times in this fight. We're in the third. It's scheduled for eight. Nice right hand from Griffin, but he can't follow up. Second time this round, he's used that lead right hand that gets landed flush both times. Now both guys with their left hands low. Counter left from Griffin finds a home, and he's got Yusef Mack backing up and against the ropes as we near the end of the third. Come on, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Cam, I can't get in. Hey. Good work, good work. That's what I want. Look, good counters, look. You gotta get off a little quicker. I want more right hands, okay? Give me more right hands, Kevin. Give me more right hands, hold your head up. Do it for work, okay? Good work, look, you get ready to kick in. You get ready to kick in. You know what I'm saying? You get ready to kick in here. Give me a little bit more. On my card, Randy Griffin won the third round. He did it with right hands. Is that lead right we were talking about? Fighters just don't expect that lead right. They get used to the rhythm of the other fighter leading with a jab. And then in the middle of the round, Mack came back a little bit. Griffin, a little wild there. Mack, very elusive. When he uses his feet, he looks like the boxer that he needs to beat to beat Griffin. This is a question of which guy is going to dictate range, and I think Griffin would love to dictate the pace of this as well. He's putting the pressure on. There he sings that left hook. And again, maybe he's banking on Yusef Mack, Mack perhaps starting to melt down as we hit the middle of this fight. I agree with you, Nick. I think that's exactly what he's counting on. And you know, so often consistency of style is, is a key in a fight. And 
even though Griffin was bouncing around and jabbing a little bit last round, I feel that in terms of pace, he's probably the guy who's more capable of keeping a, a consistent rhythm and a consistent pace. And that might benefit him in an eight-round fight. Although eight rounds isn't very long. I mean, this fight's, you know, almost half over. Clearly up for grabs. Yes, it really is. This has been a very close fight. Randy Griffin is in the red and in the black with the blue as you said him back. He's undefeated and now in close. And you could see almost even in rounds, they turned pro the same year. These guys, not much to pick between them, but Griffin had that big amateur experience, almost made the Olympic team. And Griffin has fought the better opponents. That's why uh, this is a real measuring stick for Matt. We had him on Showbox, and we really haven't seen him in the two years. He's fought a lot, but we haven't seen him in the two years since he was on Showbox. As Nick said, he looks better in a lot of ways, but he's in with a tougher guy, too. And now it's Matt coming forward in the black. He'll rip that jab and then try and turn Griffin into another punch. But Griffin waiting, and he gets clipped again with that right, with that left from Mac. Max Corner wanted him to throw more rights. We haven't seen much. And I'm not saying Yusef Mack has taken this round off, but he just got hit hard with that overhand right. Off. And now Griffin getting his confidence up, to, but he's in Yusef Mack's wheelhouse, and it's Mack battling back with a flurry that's finding a home to the jaw of Randy Griffin. Wow. I counted seven big shots landed by Mack there in a round that previously had been dominated by Griffin. Yes. He got Griffin's attention, maybe his respect, but he also got him a little riled as Griffin goes to work with renewed vigor on Yusef Mack. Now he'll reset. Griffin, hands low, keeping his distance. And Mack content to take the lead there. But now it's Griffin with a combination of his own. Is this a good place to be for Yusef Mack? I mean, he seems to have trouble shortening his shots. No, it's not, and, but, but it's where he might want to be to rest. And, and again, we're talking about consistency of performance. Mack had a big, big flurry, landed seven or eight big power shots. So he's done this round, though. Now, flurry just before the bell as we hit the halfway mark here in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. And a very close fight. How you feel, man? Huh? Hey, Randy, you gotta move that head, move the head. Sometimes bend your leg, move the head. When you see him fire, you need to tighten up. You don't need to try to miss, do that. You need to drop, bend down, right? Bend your knees, okay? Hey, look, focus a little. Listen, one, listen, one, make you have a little adjustment. A little adjustment, all right? Bring your hands in tight. All right. Yes. When you work your way in, stay tight, stay small. I'm going you... in the battle. Keep your hands tight. Please. Things Please. heat up in round four. Griffin had a real good first minute. And I don't think Mac had a prayer of seeing that shot come. But watch Mac come back here. And count these power Take shots. Well, that, that was Griffin's moment there. This one's scheduled for eighth. As you see, we hit the fifth round. Yusef Mack is undefeated in the black, and Randy Griffin, the instructions from the corner, really make sense to me, Steve. He's just not slipping enough shots, walking right in, and he really needs better, he's got to fade his way into the combat zone. He wants to be close, Griffin does, we know that, but you can't just walk in with your chin in the air. As he really tightens up his defense now. Each guy waiting on each other. A little bit of a cross-arm defense by Mack. That's a very Philadelphia thing to do. Show your opponent the left shoulder and... and, and just whacked him with a nice right hand. Good round so far for Mack. Yes. Economy of motion for Mack. He's not, you know, I don't know if he's gassed to any degree, but he's making the punches count. It just isn't a lot of wasted motion and energy. Griffin trying to rip to the body. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Rod Cunningham, the referee, breaks him. Back with his left hand low again. He just knows that Griffin can't reach him. Griffin has tried with that right hand lead, as Steve mentioned, and landed occasionally with it. But now it's Griffin for one of a few times trying to work behind the jab. Seems like Mack would rather counterpunch, Steve. 
That's been his plan the whole fight, yeah. But I, I, I think he doesn't want to fight at a real fast pace. That's pretty clear. He's willing to rest when Griffin lets him rest. Now it's Griffin trying to pull past Mack. Mack, the naturally bigger guy. Griffin might be more comfortable as a middleweight at 60. This is a super middleweight fight. Oh, nice right hand for Griffin scored. And that wakes up Mack, who bangs home a right of his own. I think Griffin, Griffin thought he had not hurt there, and he walked into a right hand in, in receipt. <laughs> Got to keep punching. I think it's apparent, Steve, as we're in the fifth round, that both guys have immense respect for each other, and Randy Griffin's plan of saying, I can walk through this guy, is all wrong, and he knows it. He may get to him and perhaps wear him down. I'm not saying that. But in terms of overwhelming him or thinking Mac is intimidated, that has not been the case. Now, you got to remember also, a key factor, these guys know each other real well. I mean, they were together two weeks ago. They were together in the gym. They are friends. They did fight as amateurs. They're both from Philly, so they know each other well. And uh, sometimes that makes for a better fight. Very often it makes for uh, too much respect. Griffin's in the red, Mac in black. Let's see if Griffin could faint his way in. His hand is dropped dangerously low. He lands with a lead left, but fails to follow up. Good exchange as we hit the bell to end round five. And a reminder, we've got a heavy-handed, two-fisted banger next. As cruiserweights collide, it's Darnell Wilson, who's won 15 straight. This guy can bang. He takes on the African Express. Yeah, and there you look at Darnell Wilson, Silver Spring, Maryland. He borrowed your body, Nick. Look. <laughs> How do you do that? You should sue him. Yeah, actually, he's getting paid more, though, for this fight, isn't he? <laughs> Sixth round of our opener. It's a twin right. bill. Okay. Showbox of new generation from Sault Ste. Marie. Keep your hands tight, man. I don't need your hey. hands wide. Hey, hey, hey G. Stop! 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 around. Stop! around. What do you think, Steve? What do you have at 3 5? 48 47, Mac. Very, very right. tough sure rounds to call. Yes, they I, are. Yeah, I think that fifth round that I gave Mac might have been the, his biggest round to date. And now we see Randy Griffin doubling his efforts and really putting on the pressure. We spoke a little earlier of Yusef Mack, and I think he is throwing better shots, sitting down on his punches better, but we still see his reluctance to really use the jab. It's a common fault in fighters, but one that his, man, his trainer, uh, Percy Custis, has been trying to cure, but we see unsuccessfully for the last two years. It was, it was hard to judge Mack last time out on Showbox. Again, he did some things uh, not so well. He was sloppy, carried his left hand. He looks more mature to me. And physically, he looks considerably bigger than Griffin. I think the, uh, the fact that he's the bigger guy is clear in this fight. And in an eight-round fight that's being fought at a reasonable pace, you know, that weight advantage, that size advantage, uh, comes into play, and yeah. I think it's, it's benefiting Max. And Max having an excellent round, and I believe it all starts off the jab. He's worked off it beautifully and scored with it, and now he's in close, not punching, as Griffin smells the opening, fighting with urgency and trying to just walk his man down and violate space Work out of that. and Work get out. something going on the inside. Griffin seems to have pretty much abandoned the body attack, which he is has. a mistake. We saw it in the first couple of rounds, but you're right, Steve. After that, it's been strictly head-hunting. Neither guy knows he's got a safe lead. That's got to be apparent. Now we see a little switch from Mack. Says he doesn't even know why he goes southpaw, but it's just instinctual, although he's a natural right-hander. And out of the clinch there, a nice right hand scores from Mack and Black. Griffin. Watching the gloves of Mack and waiting to unload. Both fighters wait. Lead right for Griffin. Lands. Misses with the follow-up left. Clear sign that Mack is a little bit tired. His left hand is being is low. It's by his hip. 
And he told us, when I carry my left hand low, it means I'm tired. Good point, Steve. And now we see Mack opening up as he seemed to be coasting in that round, almost taking it off. But all of a sudden, he's got some zip in his tank in the final 45 seconds of this round. And again, as you say, Steve, any of these rounds, <laughs> all of them could have gone either way. So everything is pivotal here. Sure. One little flurry can make the difference on all three cards in a round. And Mac is fighting in spurts. And that's one of the reasons this is such a hard fight to score. That's why I'm glad you're scoring. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> Tried to give you my pen. You gave it back to me. <laughs> Griffin. At the bell and a flurry and another tough round to call. Look, you shorten that hook up, man. You shorten that hook up, he's done. The hook is too late, now you gotta shorten it up a little bit, all right? Yeah. Look, he threw some nice stuff that round, right? I need more of that. I need more of little quick flurries and combinations real quick, okay? Is he trying, what he trying to do is steal the round for you. He's trying to do a punch, body punch, and hold our punches to you, right? And still the last minute, you hit him, call 30 seconds to him, that's what they tell him. Only thing I don't know what you're doing, you're keeping your left hand too low when he come up. Remember I just told you how to do it. Action from round six, Yusuf Mack fighting in flurries, but that round really loading up. Nice work too. Look at him, bang, bang, jumps out. Big left hook, and now watch, moves away. That's what you work on in the gym all the time. Watch any good trainer, and that's what he teaches his guy. Land and move, change direction. Yes. He's a young boy, he's gonna, take a, he's gonna make a charge. When you make that chart, make sure you hit. And it's really something Randy Griffin hasn't done all night. He hasn't stepped around after punching. He hasn't fainted his way in. He's just taken too many shots that way. So defensively, he looks limited, and it's based on his lack of really slick movement. And I, I, I assume you gave that sixth round to Max, Steve. I did. I have him 58-56 uh, or 4-2 to two in rounds. With you two to Matt. go. Yeah. But it's a close fight. I mean, it's definitely a close fight on my card, and it could be closer on the judges' cards. Griffin trying to close the gap, but short with everything. And Mack at a comfortable range, scoring with the, le with the left hands and then going into full retreat. Yusef Mack evading Randy Griffin, who is charging in red. He's got to shorten the distance. Punches look wild, not crisp. He's just not sharp shooting anymore. He looks a little desperate, Steve. He does. Enough. What are the judges going to see? They're going to see Randy Griffin coming forward, trying, throwing punches. That lead right hand's been very effective for Griffin. Probably his best punch. And when uh, your opponent's carrying his left hand by his uh, thigh, the lead right hand often works. Nice jab from both guys. Griffin's got there first, but Mack answering with one of his own. But now Griffin seems to have lost some pop on his shots. Throwing some wild punches. Now Griffin to the body for the first time in a while. Follows with that left hook to the head. Mack taking shots on the gloves and then trying to counter as he soaks up a straight right hand that could have numbed him a little bit. Griffin with a, the best shot of this round. And another tough round to call, Steve. It is. This one belongs to Griffin for uh, the first two minutes anyway. And you know, Mack has to answer right now, Nick. He wants to be a prospect. The 68-pound division's wide open. He's undefeated. He's from Philly. He's getting national television exposure for the second time in his career. And clearly, he's a skilled fighter. He can do a lot of good things in there. He's got 40 seconds left and a round left to show that he wants it. He wants to have that reputation. Let's see if he does. Uh, same token, it's there for Griffin to take. If he can What's step it up and kick it up a notch. He really hasn't been able to solve Yusef Mack all night. He's had his moments, but he's never really dominated. Not, neither guy has. And now it's Griffin going for some home run shots. His left is down by his waist. It's been a good 20 seconds since Mack's thrown a punch. Can he afford to take this round off? No, definitely not. Seven down, one to go.
Better win this round. You're pushing yourself, Cat. Are you waiting? You're waiting. You got to do it. So if you want it, don't make no, don't get stupid. He can't catch it around. Now he's throwing it. I want you to counter off of him. He override over the steps, three steps, okay? Now listen, he's making a move. When you attack him, he's getting around to the left. Mama would talk about stepping over real quick. Man. If you step over real quick, right, if you give him that kick. I need that quick step. Step over to the right real quick. Don't, don't right. give him nothing. Don't give him nothing, man. Hands are tight. Always come up. Set the Come on, come on. One to go here as they touch gloves. Randy Griffin in the red has really failed to control this fight. Max done a better job, and that's why I've got him ahead. He just has dictated pace and dictated distance. And now he is going to war because Griffin fighting with a sense of urgency, but I gotta give it to Max, not backing up. He wants to close with conviction here. So he's not gonna slide home. And against him, neither guy knows he's got any kind of a safe lead. So you gotta change gear and go for it a little bit, but go for it smart. But boy, I'll tell you, Mac is opening up. And it's Griffin backing up for one of the few times in this fight, waiting to counter, waiting to reload. Just wrenched control of this round away from Randy Griffin. Took the momentum right back. And it's Mac moving forward. Showing left shoulder. Hands down, almost inviting a lead right. Which is a dangerous move against the guy who can punch him. Randy Griffin can punch. Offensive moves, his hands are down, trying to walk down. Randy Griffin. Nick, not a good idea by Griffin to back up this round. He can't fight backing up. No, and, and, and you know, it just sends the wrong message to the judges in, in rounds that have been very close. That could be the difference in a judge's mind. Combination for Mac, and he's doing what he does best, hit and get out. Combinations from good angles, and then he moves out of danger. And now he's in close and willing to rumble with Randy Griffin, and it looks like he has Griffin in retreat and maybe a little hurt. Griffin trying to find himself and maybe shake off that attack, but he's not been able to blunt Yusef Mack, who again is closing nicely in this final round. And to me, he's sailing home to a victory. Agree, Nick. I think Mac has this round and this fight, but I'll tell you what, I just like to see a little more consistency of effort because you can see in this round when he opens up, he really looks good. He looks dominant, he looks strong. Fighting in spurts, but yeah, that's the thing. You know, I know he's a 68 pounder, he's not a featherweight. These guys pick their shots, but I just like to see more consistent effort. Boy, this is not a way to finish as Griffin with his hands in the air. Lost this round, I would think, and this nice fight. Ball, nice nice ball. Good work. Good work, man. Good work, baby. Good work. Good work. Here. Here. Good work. Good fight. Good fight. Good fight, baby. Good job, man. Good fight. Steve, hard to know if it was a matter of condition for Mac. He touched on the point he was fighting in spurts. And maybe the reason was it was a short notice type of situation. And he didn't yeah. ask himself, and he just couldn't. Uh, he couldn't will his body. Well, do any more than that. That's that's fair. But keep in mind, it was two weeks notice for both guys. And in my opinion, Griffin loses the fight, and Griffin is more suited at 106 touchdown. Because I just think the thing you touched on, Yusef Mack, is a little bit too big for him. Not an overwhelming puncher, but a guy who wouldn't be blunted by Randy oh, Griffin's attacks. 46, baby. James Shuler, Shuler Jim, baby. Shuler Jim, Philly. So Mac Represent, closes the show home, beautifully.
tips. Good eighth round for Mac, Nick, as you said. Griffin came out. Inviting a brawl, it's exactly what he got, but Mac landed most of the big shots. I bet you anything, they were, what, four pounds uh, different at the weigh-in, Mac being the bigger guy. I bet you Mac was 10 pounds heavier in the ring, Boy, he at least. Like and, and that really did ultimately make a difference because Griffin had to come forward making an infight, and when you're making an infight against the guy who's 10 pounds bigger than you are, you're at a big disadvantage. And you gave yeah, Griffin how many rounds? This, I called it 77-75. I have it 5-3 uh, in rounds for Yusuf Mack. We await the decision here in Sault Ste. Marie. You see Ronnie Duncan, ring announcer. Randy Griffin in red. And up to Ronnie Duncan to make it official. Let's see who won. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight strong rounds, we have a decision. We go to the score guards. Judge Frank Garza scores it. 77-75, Griffin. Judge Gary Merritt scores it. 77-75, Mack. And Judge Bill Page scores this fight. 76-76. We have a draw. Wow. What did he do?